Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Cindy McDonald, and I am an educator, I'm an entrepreneur, and now I'm the producer of these Friday Forum shows. And I love having conversations with experts who share my passion for education and serving other professionals. So that's what Friday Forums are about, is serving you, helping you to serve the students um, and families or community that you serve in. And I'm so pleased and honored to have with me today a colleague and a friend I've known for many years, Brad Schiller from Prompt. He's the owner and founder of Prompt. It's a leading college admissions essay coaching company. Prompt's essay management platform, college essay curriculum, and writing coaches are used by over 600 AECs and over 10,000 students. But who's counting, right, Brad? Um, per year. Uh, I count. <laughs> yeah, you're the data guy. I bet you. <laughs> yeah, um, there you go. <laughs> I know Brad is an expert in literacy education. This has been your passion for a long time and has recently released an English academic literacy curriculum under the Penn brand. And it's going to be used by 10,000s of students in this year and upcoming years. Previously, Brad was an engagement manager, yeah, I can't even talk today, manager at McKinsey and an independent consultant to the Fortune 500 and private equity firms. Brad has a degree in mechanical engineering and management science from just a little rinky dink college called MIT, right? Yeah, so, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> no big deal. Um, so as you're joining us today, go ahead and put in your name and your location. And then we have a question for you. Do you think your students have submitted an essay that was generated by AI? Have you seen students use AI and submit it? So we'd love to see that and have that um, have you answer that question. I also want to introduce and recognize my assistant, Carmen Gallegos, and she's the one that keeps us on track. She keeps track of your chat and the questions and answers so that you can, uh, we can keep the conversation going. So we're very happy to have you. As before, use the chat. You can. I love being able to have you see who all is on the call and on the Friday Forum also be able to chat with each other, but put the questions in the Q&A so that we can access those. So, and for many of you may know, this is a redo. <laughs> Brad and I did this two weeks ago yeah. and I did not hit the record button. I am assuring everybody we've got the record button on and and we know it's going to be and, better. Than and the, the best thing is, is because it's take two, it's actually going to be far better than the first one. So that, like we know we, we have some other stuff we're including. So we're 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 we're, we're good to go. Uh, absolutely. So it looks like we've got people from Boston, Chicago. Chris is here from Livermore. Yay. Um, and what are you seeing about has anybody seen any? Um, so Georgia says she's seen AI developed essays. Deborah says, no, I don't think so. Um, oh, Valentina, we're glad to have you here from France. I don't know. It must be like 10 o'clock at night for you. I'm not sure mm -hmm. what time it is. So, um, and how would you know, like, how would you know if somebody was submitting an AI that's that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at some AI generated stuff. Actually, read through them and take a look at which of these are actually like AI. Uh, like, what are the markers basically for AI generated essays? Kind of as you are reading these essays to be able to identify them. Number one, and then number two, um, we're also going to be then uh, taking a look at some like AI checkers and that sort of thing and some tools. Um, that you can use. And then we're going to talk about how to actually talk about this with students, parents, that sort of thing. And then we're even going to take a look at like when AI can actually be a little bit helpful um, for students kind of as, as they're writing, uh, which tends to be kind of at the end of the, of the essay process. So um, we got all of that uh, in, in store for today. Um, Cindy, do you have anything in particular that you really want to get started with? 
Well, let's start with just a broad definition of AI. And I also know there was a, an announcement, an update that came in for ChatGPT this week that I think is, you know, um, worth noting and might be fundamental. I think it changes the conversation a little bit. And it's no longer based on just 2021 data and older that now it can Oh yeah, it's more recent. I, I think that's gonna have a little bit less to do with college admissions essays and more of like just like research or searching for information um that you can utilize. And, and by the way, you could have, if you knew kind of how to use the tools, you could have used kind of later data anyways, uh, yeah. you know, more recently. So it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so like I would just say that. When we're talking about AI in the context of college admissions essays, um, you know, we're talking about like ChatGPT, BARD, these basically large language models that are able to basically write pretty nice prose. Um, and basically are what they're doing is, is they're pattern matching. So they take in uh, data from across the web on a bunch of example essays, basically, essentially like all these different example essays that students are maybe already reading online. And then they're taking all of that and basically creating kind of like a collective voice using collective buzzwords or like basically what is the pattern of word patterns that are very commonly used across these example essays. It doesn't really look at like what is a good example essay or not, per se. Um, it doesn't also really truly understand content, right? It is matching on words. Um, you know, it's not critically thinking about the essays and what actually college admissions officers want. But it does a pretty good job of writing a decent sounding essay that really ultimately usually fails upon closer inspection, which we'll take a look at. Look at. Um, and, and that failure upon closer inspection is actually very helpful for us, right? Uh, and admissions officers and other people like that. Um, but what I will say that I think is really important here um, is to kind of kick things off a little bit. And I think Cindy, you're probably going to get to this. It's like, what are, what are admissions officers going to do? Right. I think that's kind of the core question. Um, and Cindy, uh, I think the answer to that is they don't really know yet. I don't know what you, <laughs> what you've heard, but we've heard kind of that resounding, uh, point. So any, 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 uh, any thoughts there, and uh, then I'll get into some more detail of why or what, what's going on. Yeah, no, that, and I think that's what's on everybody's mind right now. Mm -hmm. One of the things about AI and AI in general, and you know, we just had NACAC last week. I didn't go, but I'm sure there was a lot of discussion. So if somebody was there and wants to put something in the chat about it, but but that's the issue. It's like we, it's here. We don't know really what to do with it. We don't know really what the impact is. We can't say forget it. It's not. They're not going to use it. You know, um, but how far will it go or how will beneficial it be? And as you said, when it's upon uh, closer inspection, you can see where the AI generated just falls flat. So yeah, let's go ahead and share. Yeah, what so let, yeah, let me talk a little bit about kind of admissions officers first mm -hmm. and the general result, and then we'll take a look at actually like AI generated stuff, but I think this is helpful to level set on. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, we, we have, uh kind of reached out and spoken to a number of admissions officers and the the uh and we also have like a former uh admissions officer on our team uh from UPenn and Temple and that sort of thing uh and she knows a lot of these people and the general consensus was we're going to kind of figure it out as we're reading these okay mm -hmm. so they don't really know how much they're going to get in that's AI aided or what I call AI aided not just generated because a lot of students are taking something that might be AI generated and then modifying it, okay? Or they'll write something and then actually have AI take it from there. Um, so those are anything that's like AI aided. So they don't necessarily know what they're going to do ultimately with these essays. And I think they wanna get through this application season or start reading a bunch of these essays. And then they're gonna start identifying these or kind of figuring it out kind of as they go and then deciding what they want to necessarily do with that, okay? Um, and I think that that is really important here um, because generally speaking, what we've heard is like, they don't really want essays that are AI generated, okay? Um, AI aided to too much of a degree is also clearly probably an issue, okay? Um, 
And so when you're reading through these essays, if they're suspecting that something may be AI generated, they probably aren't going to take the time to actually inspect it much closer. Or if they do, they might throw it into an AI uh, detection tool, which we'll take a look at one that we think is, is the most useful one there, copy leaks, um, and, and see like, hey, am I kind of barking up the right tree here or not? Okay. Um, but all of these are inputs that aren't like 100% guaranteed that says this is AI written or AI aided or AI not AI aided. But the challenge is, is if you're an admissions officer, you're going to think, hey, if you're suspecting this may be AI aided, you're like, ah, I'm on the fence then about this particular student. You're more likely to just put it in the no pile. Okay. Um, and that is the concern. And it's not like they're going to go reach out to the student and be like, hey, student, um, did you do this? Did you write it or not? Like, you know, that sort of thing. No, they're just going to move on. And so the student's never really going to know ultimately, you know, the reason, um, you know, for, for the, the school to say no. Right. And that's why we tend to say it's like, hey, don't utilize these AI tools early in the essay writing process. There's like a very clear point where you're like, hey, AI, you can help me when you're almost done with the essay to basically identify some words or phrases that maybe you can remove. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that later. Um, but that's actually useful for students when you're on a tight word count, you have like a 250 word word count, you're at 260 words and, and the student's like, I don't know what 10 to cut. And then you as the IEC or us as essay editors, um, we're like, well, here's some words that you might consider cutting. And AI is actually pretty decent at that, okay? Uh, and so we'll take a look at that as well. But the, and by the way, at that point, it's like, that's not what I would consider like AI aided very heavily, right? It's it's more of a, hey, if the student actually like read through this stuff themselves, they could probably identify this over time. It's just like they've never really been taught the skill to say, hey, what words or phrases can I cut in order to do that? And that's something that we teach a lot of students as we're working with them, but that's the, the, the general gist of it. So that's the concern, right? Is basically, hey, if I'm an admissions officer, they were already like, hey, this essay, like, this almost sounds like the parent's voice, right? Or this sounds like the, you know, did they really write this, right? Or that sort of thing. And any of that kind of like, I have a suspicion that kind of leads to that. I'm just going to move on, right? I'm not going to like really investigate this like much further, right? So we've seen this in other situations for a while, okay? Um, and, you know, this is just kind of another rendition of something that's existed, right? So I, I just want to be clear that that is likely what's going to happen. The one thing I'll also mention is that, and we see, um, you know, we, we, we've seen something like 20,000 essays or more this year already. I would say across the essays that we see, we are detecting like that it may be AI aided, like heavily AI aided in like one or 2% of the time. Okay, so it's very minimal, all right? And why is that important here? Um, is that, and, and by the way, I think that's partially because of the student population that we work with. And so it may be similar for you and it may be similar or it may not be, um, but the students that are applying to more highly selective institutions we have found uh, have kind of realized that the writing probably needs to be their own, okay? Um, and so they're less prone to utilize AI very heavily. Um, or if they are utilizing AI in some way, they're doing it a lot more intelligently where it's a lot harder to detect um, that it might be AI aided. But I, I don't think they're really like realistically heavily using it. We had one student who was like very sharp um, that used it, that was like, hey, let me use it. I didn't use it for my common app essay, but now I'm gonna use it for my supplementals. And it was like, you know, very quickly identified by our, by our team, you know, reached out to the student, reached out to the parents, um, even, and, uh, uh, and then they were like, oh, now they're, they're, like, it was, so it, you know, these, these are the sorts of things that, like, as we get closer to the deadline, some students may try to do it, um, but I think this is important, and, and what we have done is, all the students that families that we work directly with, um, we have sent out a message to them about AI. Okay, uh, and I'm going to share that all with you. Um, 
or we'll share that in the, the notes post this. So it could be a, something that you may want to use with families as well, um, or a version of it, but that's kind of the general gist of it. But yeah, it's not, we're not seeing a massive quantity of it. I do think for students that are not necessarily working with IECs, they're not working with essay coaches. I have a feeling that they're going to be more prone to do this specifically at institutions where essays, the students are like, Hey, the essay doesn't really matter that much for me anyways. Right. Um, that's kind of when, you know, I think we're going to see this much more frequently. Okay. Well, we'll guess, pause there because we're, we're about to pull up chat GPT, but anything, Cindy, that we should cover? Well, before? I did. No, I think that that pretty much um, gives us a, a place to start and, and a common understanding of what AI truly is and what it's not, because I think a lot of people don't have a clear understanding. Um, and I know every time I hear you explain it, it helps me to understand it a little bit more. But as you were talking about, and you know, the AI and how it generates when you read these essays, and I know we'll see these, it helps me mm -hmm. as a counselor realize, I mean, we're already having to work with students and counsel them. It's like, don't have a generic like closing. This is why I want to go to college. And that's going to be even more important now because that could be so even if they write it themselves, it could still be interpreted as AI generated. So the, the need to be very <laughs> specific and authentic is even greater now. And it's that is such a hard thing to, to teach students. And, and that's why I do a lot of quick writing and a lot of pre-writing for my students before we even get to the college essays to help them kind of get over that hump. So. Yeah. But, and by the way, right, like a lot of this really does come down to specificity and detail. Yep. Exactly what Cindy is saying. Um, and it's all the stuff that we want students to actually include in their essays anyways. But a lot of it's like the right type of detail, the right type of specificity, because um, and, I, and we'll talk a little bit more about like false positives for AI and that sort of stuff later um, after we take a look at an AI generated essay so we can actually like level set on that. Um, but that's that's kind of the general just a bit. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to submit this essay prompt here that like we have telling it to write, right? So write me a 650 word common app essay that's good enough to get me accepted to an Ivy League college. Use the following information about this mission trip to Mexico. Have a little detail here, right? About tutoring elementary school kids. Now I spend, you know, hours per week tutoring, um, you know, here's some details for this Mexico trip and this math scholars program that I now tutor kids with um, and uh, include what I learned about myself and others as a result of my experience. So I'm, what I'm trying to do is give like a pretty, like a reasonably detailed prompt that, you know, student, students have kind of figured out how to utilize this where they're going to provide more detail than like two sentences, right? And they might provide a little bit more detail than this, but you still run into a lot of the same uh, problems, okay? Um, unusual activity from my system. Thanks. There you go. All right, let's go. Um, <laughs> so title transforming lives one sum at a time. Like you, you're already like, even just reading the title, you're like, that seems a little like, you know, not what like the typical students are going to like come up with or right where it's like, Hey, I've got this little pun in there. You know, I've got some multiple meanings, you know, I've got this uh, anyways. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's a strong. So as we read through this in just a second, as, as it's uh, generating, we're going to take a read through it. And I'm going to just identify the things where I'm like, Oh, this is like that kind of like the, like you'll just see like huge numbers of buzzwords basically um, that, that end up coming into play here. Okay. So the sun beat down on my face, the scent of a roasted of roasted corn wafting from a nearby vendor. So already, like, you know what? Students do write this type of stuff. I think a lot of times it's worthless in these essays. But, you know, this is like, once again, it's pattern matching, right? So the examples of essays online that it actually pulls from tend to actually have a different purpose than what essays you're submitting to college, right? The online essays, as I always tell students, it's like, hey, you're reading these examples. Why are they there? What's the audience intended for? It's actually intended to generate clicks, right? So automatically you're like, hey, I want something that's a little bit more fun, a little bit more engaging to read with some like beautiful descriptive language. Like that's gonna be more, you know, metaphors, that sort of thing. That's gonna be more of the stuff that 
you know, is, is going to be this example essays online. Okay. Uh, the children's laughter echoed through the open courtyard of the school in rural Mexico. Among those kids was Pablo, a tenacious and bright eight-year-old, eager to learn, but limited by language barriers. While the main goal of my mission trip was to impart the importance of education and tutor math, Pablo expressed additional interest. He wanted to converse with me in English. All right. So this is like, not yet like, hey, this is obvious AI, okay? There's a few things in here where you're like, wow, like the eager to learn, but limited by language barriers, okay? Not a lot of people would probably use a phrase like that, right? That that That's a, it's a very concise, well-written phrase. Um, and, um, you know, how many high school students are really talking about language barriers, okay? But at the same time, like, this isn't like an obvious thing yet. Okay. Over five days, our interaction shifted from exchanging tippet smiles and using hand gestures to having meaningful exchanges. So this is starting to get a little, like, once again, meaningful. So, like some of the vocabulary that ends up getting used. By day three, Pablo would confidently say, hello, how are you? And by the fifth day, he gleefully shared, I love tacos. By the way, every time I use this prompt, like, do, do, do I even include that he loves tacos in here? No. Like literally every time, like I've done this every time. It's hilarious. Like it always comes to like, I love talk. Like this seems like this is the type of detail where you're like, the lack of specificity of the detail is a problem, right? And okay, it's using tacos because it's a student in Mexico. Like, is that what's happening here, right? Like it's it's just a little wild. Um, in broken yet understandable English. Uh, it was a simple conversation about his favorite food, but it was a testament to the power of perseverance and a symbol of our transcended barriers. Barriers? Cool. Yeah. Right? Like, um, just, like, this is the type of stuff where you're like, the, the, the probability that a student actually writes like this and thinks like this that's in high school, let alone just in the world in general, is unlikely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, now, once again, this is pattern matching, but what it does is, is it thinks about, I mean, it doesn't think right? it's pattern matching, but it, it, what it's doing is, is it's kind of pulling these buzzword phrases that it thinks that admissions officers will really like, like transcending barriers, right? That's like, oh my goodness. Yes. Students, like I want students that will like transcend barriers, like, you know, go across like many, like this is you know, the power of perseverance, right? These are like these buzzwords that it is just throwing in here, right? As we keep going, upon returning home, I carried with me not only the memories of the beautiful Mexican landscape, like why that detail is there, but also, once again, they're making up details because it's got nothing else to fill in, uh, but also a deepened commitment to educational equity. Once again, it's like, really, like, is a student really going to do that? I joined Math Scholars, an organization passionate about tutoring elementary school students from low-income backgrounds. Each week, amidst my busy high school schedule, I eagerly looked forward to the one, two to three hours I'd spend with these budding scholars. Also a little weird, right? Um, among the students, my students was Loris, a shy fourth grader who approached math with trepidation. Who's using those words, right? On our first day, Loris hesitated to even pick up his pencil, let alone tackle the arithmetic problem on his page. Like, who's putting arithmetic? This is a math problem. Like, right. come on. Uh, it was clear he didn't see himself as a, quote, math person. Together, we embarked on a journey of rediscovering math. Like, this is like a, 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 a classic kind of like AI, like, Hey, I'm going to have a topic sentence for the paragraph. Like it's, it's not that bad, but like, once again, in totality, like you add all these things together and you're like, oh, this is like, you can see like the students doing some of these things, but like the totality of them is, is, is a challenge. I approached his education holistically. Okay. Um, intertwining lessons with real world applications. We explored the math behind his favorite activities and games. Slowly, Laura's perspective shifted, math transformed from being from a subject of dread to one of joy. As weeks turned into months, not only did Loris become proficient in math, but he began to dream big. 
He shares new fund aspiration with a twinkle in his eye. I want to build rockets when I grow up. Also was in the last one of these that it wrote about rockets. Also not including the details. Once again, it's making stuff up. But I think the real key here is like the failure upon closer inspection. So if you're actually talking about, you know, somebody would actually write holistically intertwining lessons with real world applications, I would expect like a very specific example about that mm -hmm. versus favorite activities and games. What activities? What games? How did you do this? Okay. This is the type of thing that is super common uh, in AI generated essays where it's like, hey, I'm going to make up some detail and then I'm going to give like a sentence after that. But like, I, I, I'm not going to make up so much detail that it's like, like, once again, the specificity and the detail is the thing that's like about your experiences and that we want students to include. Um, you know, it's just, it, it's very much lacking uh, in these essays. Both Pablo and Loris taught me profound lessons. From Pablo, I learned about the human, like, and now we're already talking about what I learned, okay? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we usually work with students on essays, right, we don't have that much of the essay, like, as this, like, hey, I'm now going to, like, once again, like, all the detail that I already included here has already been used. So now it's just going to make up a bunch of stuff. That's basically what's going to happen. Um, both, po and, and then, like, tons of buzzwords we're about to see. Both Pablo and Loris taught me profound lessons. From Pablo, I learned about the human spirit's capacity to learn and adapt. Okay. How? Like, where's the detail? Our ability to communicate transcended the limitations of language, highlighting the university of universality of, of human connection. Through Loris, I saw firsthand the transformative power of education. A once math first student was now dreaming of engineering feats that would reach the stars. Um, however, it wasn't just about what they learned. It was about what I discovered within myself. My experiences in Mexico and with math scholars taught me patience, adaptability, and the sheer impact of persistence. Like, how do you learn this much stuff in these tiny little experiences that have happened? Now, I understand we have students that are like, putting these huge things out there, like, here's all this crazy stuff that I did, right? Or like, here's what I learned about myself. And you're like, you learned about that from a one hour interaction with one student. Like, that's kind of what we think about, right? Uh, but that's what it's doing here, right? It's just like, it is like, let me get big, huge picture with big buzzwords, big phrases, you know, all of that. Um, I came to realize that my passion for education wasn't just about academic subjects, but empowering individuals to believe in themselves, right? We're just hearing all the tropes that it thinks the missions officers want to want to hear. My mission wasn't only to teach math, but also instill confidence, a sense of confidence and curiosity that would equip these students to chase any dream they envisioned. Moreover, I recognized a societal lesson, the vast disparity of in educational resources and opportunities. It highlighted the responsibility those with privilege have in making a tangible difference. You know, once again, it's like, oh, kids talking about privilege. Let's throw that one in there too, right? That seems to make sense in this context. These experiences have shaped my perspective and aspirations, igniting a passion to champion education equity, whether in the rural corners of Mexico or urban centers at home. Uh, I have come to understand that every student, irrespective of their background, deserves an opportunity to realize their potential. As I look to the future and opportunities that college presents, I am committed to furthering this mission. I seek to be part of a community that values diversity of thought and experience where I can continue my advocacy for education. It's not just about solving uh, complex equations or mastering a language. It's about building bridges to a brighter, more equitable future. All right. There you go. I'm going to save the world. Thank you very much. Yeah. I. Here's the thing. Like this essay reads well, right? But fails upon like the closer inspection, right? This this is the all the hallmarks of AI. And once you've read enough of these essays, and by enough I mean like three, um, you can start spotting these things like pretty easily because it's like these word patterns like very like literally will keep showing up in these essays. So we had the system write the same essay multiple times. And we have literally seen tacos, rockets, like um, uh, patience, adaptability, persistence, like empowering others. Like that has been in multiple of these essays using the same, like you're like, well, it uses the same prompt. None of that stuff is mentioned in the prompt. You put a different prompt in and we'll include a lot like with different details, but kind of somewhat related. 
you're going to get the same language that's used, literally the exact same phrase sometimes. Okay. And so when you're an admissions officer and you're reading a bunch of applications, you are going to be able to start identifying these even without the help of an AI detector pretty easily. Okay. Um, so I just want to mention that. So now we're actually going to plug this into uh, an AI detector. All right. So quick note on AI detection. Um, there's a bunch of different AI detectors out there. Um, uh, I was looking this up because we had a parent that was like, oh my goodness, like my kid's essay has been like, I plugged it into the originality.ai AI detector and it says that it was AI written. And he's like, oh my God, like what's going to happen here, right? And, but when you read the essay, I mean, it was interesting because it just turned out this kid like actually kind of writes like an AI would write. Like, it's just like, that's his style. That's his personality, which makes sense. Like some people would write like that. Why not? Because the AI is pattern matching, right? So clearly other people have written like this before, but what you see is, is you see some false positives. Okay. And so the point is, is like when admissions officers are reading these, I don't think that many schools are going to like put every single essay through an AI detector um, and then get an AI score for all of them and just throw out the ones without even reading them that say they might be AI. They know there's problems with these. Um, and so the key is though, is like some of these are like have higher false positive rates. The one that we like the best is copy leaks. And that's because they also work with a lot of educational institutions on plagiarism detection. I also know the copy leaks people and I think they, they do like a pretty good job. Okay. Um, so uh, the other thing that I really like about copy leaks, because we're going to use it here, is that I will actually highlight very specific parts of the essay that I think is more likely to be AI. AI okay. So let's take a look. All right. Cool. So you can see this essay that was we had just had the AI write. Um, it is saying, hey, this beginning is like 72% probability for AI. This part, right, each week, amidst my bustling high school schedule, I eagerly look forward to, you know, two to three hours, you know, so this is picking up like, hey, this could maybe be human. And, and once again, this has like less of those buzzword phrases basically in it. And then when you get to the end of the essay, which we were all like, wow, this is just like buzzword city making stuff up, all that. It's like very much like the highest probability for AI. Wow. Okay. Um, so we like this because a lot of students... So what, what students do, and, and I'm going to talk about this for a second because this is really important, like in terms of what you're going to see from students, um, is that a lot of students are going to be like, I don't know how to start. So I'm going to have the AI write a draft for me, then I'm going to modify it. Okay. This is really dangerous. Really, really dangerous. And the reason why is, as we were reading this, we were identifying things that sounded pretty good. Like I, a once math adverse student was now dreaming of engineering feats that would reach for the stars. We saw like patients adaptability, persistence. We saw like empowering individuals, right? Confidence, like all of these things making a tangible difference. These are all things that students are going to read and be like, oh, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. You know, I, I like that. that. So they keep it. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of times the students are like they're not like students, by the way, like students really struggle at revising their writing because they almost never have to do it in school, even the top students. OK, so what that means is, is that students are going to come in here. And, and by the way, they've been, you know, the students that are going to use AI for this have been using AI probably in the classroom and they've been getting away with it. All right. And so what they're doing is they're using it in the classroom and then they're like going in and making some minor modifications and then they're getting away with it. You can't take that risk here because what happens is the student's going to be like, read this. They're like, oh, I'm going to modify this and add some details in, you know, instead of maybe I'll even figure out instead of favorite games and activities. Oh, let me put some specific ones in there. For example, they're going to do that um, and so on and so forth. But too much of this is the like, guarantee, no matter how strong the student is, this is going to too, this is going to influence them reading this too much. To the point where they're actually going to utilize some of this, this, these words and phrases, and then they're putting themselves at risk of being it detected as being like heavily AI aided. Okay, um, so don't do that. Um, it's better to to have it um, take an essay, and um, uh, you know, it's it's much better to have it 
the student write an essay and then get feedback on it from the AI. But that also is a bit challenging because the AI tends to be pretty aggressive with rewriting. Okay. Uh, and then it ends up being more AI detected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up. Um, so we have any questions or things that, that came in here yet? Doesn't look like it. No, not so far. Cool. So Cindy, do you have any thoughts or things you wanted to add as I, as I kind of pull yeah, up on you? That's, you know, that's one thing that, that occurred to me is like when you're putting together that prompt for the AI to do it, if you say, write this in a 16 year old voice, does that make a difference in what it generates? I mean, once again, it's like you want to put that this is like a, a common application essay. Okay. Um, or like, hey, this is for college admissions. Like it is going to then utilize that information. Now, could you say, hey, write me an essay, a personal narrative or whatever. Don't link it to college admissions. Say, write it in a, yes, maybe. But then now it's like, it even understands the audience of what you're writing for even less. And it produces something that's even more, right? And, and probably even worse than, than what it's attempting to do. Um, so are there ways around this? Maybe, right? Yes. Um, I, I haven't, and I've experimented with this a lot. I just don't think that that's like, once again, like these are not the paths that you want to be going down. Right. Okay? And it's not a good, yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not a good use of time. We'd rather have our students working on it or us, you know, reviewing it than having to figure out all this. So, yeah. So, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put another prompt in here and I'm going to take an essay that um, is this like burrito essay that we, uh, we use very frequently. I'm going to plug this in here. And I'm basically going to tell it, improve this common app essay such that I'll be accepted to UPenn. Just throw it out there, right? Make the content more compelling, structure it better. So it's basically like, hey, make this better. All right. Now, there, there are a couple of things that we're going to talk about, like, you know, related to AI that are that are somewhat helpful that, that we'll take a look at in, in a bit. Um, uh, but, you know, that's not kind of the main purpose of, of, of today, right? We're, we're talking mostly about like AI uh, detection. Um, so now what I'm going to have it, as I said, what we're going to do is um, we're having it kind of, you know, basically like rewrite this, this essay. Okay. Um, and the challenge that you have with ChatGPT is like, it's like, hey, I'm going to use the pattern matching of online essays plus your voice. And it's still like then uh, ends up having issues. So the number one thing is when you tell it to rewrite something is a word count problem, actually. So what it does is, um, so let me, so this is like a 650 word essay. And uh, I had it, re, you know, basically it'd be like, hey, make this better. Um, and, uh, you know, it's now 365 words. So um, ChatGPT has zero understanding of word count. Like it, it just has no idea. And I think a lot of it's because, um, so you could tell it, be like, hey, turn this 800 word essay into a 650 word essay. You'll be like, oh, I'll get like a 300 word essay, or I might get a 500 word essay. I might even get a 700 word essay. It's just like all over the place, okay? And, and it just depends, right, on, on how it's feeling, I feel like. And, and a lot of it's because it's not really considering the content that it's already written as it's continuing to write. Um, so it's not really kind of thinking particularly well. But the challenge that you have is, it's like when it has made massive and substantial changes or, you know, to this essay, now you're starting to get the AI writing is starting to really kind of come into play, right? So this humbling burrito escapade taught me an invaluable lesson. Sometimes stepping out of your comfort zone reveals uncharted areas of potential. Oh my goodness, right? Like that, that is like, what is going on here? Um, and so like, I, I can take something that, and I'm not going to put it in here because I get a limited number of these, but like, that was very, very clearly, um, uh, not AI done. Uh, and I now put it in here where I had the AI, um, help it. Um, and it, it may actually still come up as, as, as a, you know, human, cause it's using those details. Um, but now it's a much lower probability for human than like literally almost a hundred percent. Okay. And the challenge here is, is like, the admissions officer is going to be like, hey, I'm reading some of this and this is like really weird. Okay. Like, like, hey, it's kind of feels like it might be interspersed. Like maybe the student will come back in and add some details. And now it doesn't flow particularly well. Cause once again, students aren't very good at revising their work. Um, so it becomes a little choppy and, 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 and it can become uh, concerning. Uh, we had a question. Do you have to pay for copy leaks? Um, you don't uh, if you only use it like a few times a day. 
Okay. Otherwise you do. And it's like 10 cents because it's not like a, a ton uh, of that. Okay. Um, and so, um, the, the, the one thing that I will say that I think is more useful and I, we're working on improving this, this essay prompt, um, because chat GPT has made some changes recently. That's kind of been like, uh, has uh, actually been a negative for for accomplishing what we want the the chat GPT to do. Um, but one thing that we find that tends to be pretty helpful is when, as I mentioned before, when students are a little bit over the word count and they need to identify areas that maybe they could cut within their essays, okay? And we have a pretty cool tool we're actually working on for this right now. Um, but the, um, so what you can do is you can write this type of thing. Minimally edit the following essay. Do not rewrite sentences. Do not rewrite paragraphs, right? Only make minor suggestions based off of very specific things, okay? So removing unnecessary prepositional phrases, removing unnecessary adjectives, removing unnecessary words, increasing readability, okay? Now, ChatGPT with this prompt used to do way, way better at, 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 uh, at doing this than, than I'm going to show you here. Um, but um, this is like the type of direction that is actually useful for students, okay? Where it's going to do a lot kind of less um, detail, right? So you can see here, like the shred of fart port um, started falling out of the gaping hole. The woman gawked at me from the, from the counter, right? You know, you see this, the pieces of shredded park started falling out of the gaping hole. The woman gawked at me from the other side of the counter, right? So it's removing some language and phrases that may not be 100% necessary. Um, I still prefer this writing, but you know, a lot of times you have to cut words that you're like, actually, I really like those words. You have to make tough decisions. Um, and so what's interesting here is, and you now this is this is part of the problem, this prompt used to like maybe only cut out like 30 words and now it's like trying to cut out like 50 words um, you know, or, or like way more word, word count. Um, but you can see here, like it, it keeps a lot more of the, the, the detail basically um, that, um, that the student had included. So now we're at 464 words. And one of the things you can do is you can take this output from here and you can upload this plus the original version into Google Docs, for example, and do a compare, okay? And it will actually show you the student which modifications were actually made. Uh, we're working on a tool that will actually like show that better, but it's it's basically like line editing, okay? And what you want students to be able to do then is kind of read through it and basically make their own choices for which little phrases or little pieces of information would be cut or removed, okay? So if I go into the AI detector tool with this thing that's more minimally edit, minimal editing, um, and you can see it's now like 86% probability for human, okay? So once again, it's still actually cutting too many words. I think it's giving students too many choices for what they may want to remove, um, but it actually is more helpful because now the student can go in and choose, like as we saw, like at the beginning of this essay, the shredded pork started falling out of a gaping hole. Okay, instead of like the pieces of shredded pork, right? Um, the woman gawked at me from the counter. We used to be other side of the counter, okay? Yet, we know that this language, like it doesn't, the other one reads slightly better, but if you need to cut like five to seven words, this isn't that much worse, okay? And this is actually pretty helpful for, for students. Where ChatGPT really starts getting into trouble or where students really get into trouble is when ChatGPT starts combining multiple sentences together or removes entire sentences from which the details actually matter because ChatGPT doesn't understand their audience. They don't understand like what is actually good or not good. What you want it to do like the, is these four things that I talked about, which are like the four things when we tell students to read through it themselves and identify words to cut. It's like, hey, look at these little phrases, clauses, prepositional phrases. Which of those can you remove, okay? Or which of those can you flip around, like make this whole phrase into one a one word adjective, right? Um, which adjectives can you remove? Where can you actually maybe combine a couple piece of sentences? Like these are all things that are like the right revising strategies to make your writing more concise and reduce word count. And that's something that ChatGPT we found to be like pretty helpful with and allow students to kind of go through and make their own decisions. Um, you know, they're not going to take this whole thing and just like direct copy this and, and put it into um, 
into their application because it actually cut out too many words, right? For example, right? Uh, and so on and so forth. And if they're not happy with this, they just click regenerate and it'll, you know, you can get another version of it basically, okay? So th this is something that I think is pretty useful, especially as IECs, when we, a lot of our work the last couple of weeks of <laughs> right before deadlines are students that are like, oh my goodness, like I am a, I am a student and I am like really, really, really like, I don't know, I can't figure out the last 10 words to cut in my essay. Like, there's no way I could cut 10 words. And then we're like, as essay editors, we're like, here's 30 words that you could probably remove if you really needed to. Pick and choose which ones you want. But that took us like 10, 15 minutes to do, okay? And it's a skill that the students have never learned. But guess what? Once the students actually start seeing you do that, um, they start picking it up, right? So you usually don't have to do a few of them. But if you can leverage like an AI tool for that purpose, that's going to save you a lot of time and it can save your students a lot of time as well. And it can actually help them learn. So I like that one quite a bit. Um, another thing that you can do is actually have it provide feedback on the essay. Um, the feedback is not great, um, I will say, but it's 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 better than like, you know, they're, 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 you know, like a random friend or parent might give that, you know, don't doesn't really understand what to do. Um, and, um, so you can basically, but you want it to kind of, when you're asking for feedback, you want it to like focus on specific, th specific things. You want it to, you know, basically write out like, Hey, here's what I learned. You know, here's what I learned about, like, here's what I want to learn about myself. Here's what I learned about myself. Like, you know, what, what, what content should I include that I'm not including? What questions do you have as you're reading through this essay? Like you can put those types of things in there. Um, we found it's semi-useful for helping brainstorm content. Um, but a lot of times it's it's kind of pointing at things from a brainstorming perspective that's that's not actually that that great um, ov overall. Um, so the thing that I, I always say is like the most useful is, hey, the student's just about done with their essay. Have it go in and like identify these like little things that, that maybe they can make their writing more concise. Uh, and I think it gives you more interesting options for that than like a Grammarly does. Um, yeah. Oh, I agree. I agree. And I think that's, um, that is very helpful because then you're teaching them skills that they will be able to use. You know, as you said, just being able to cut words out, they have never had to do that before. And so that is such a, um, a great opportunity to learn how to do that overall. And we really, you know, struggle with all this, this whole, as you've indicated, this whole writing process, when they're doing this through their essays, it's awesome, very new uh, for them. So all the little tips and tools we can give can be very beneficial. So Mark was asking about other ways that we might be able to use um, AI. And you want to go through that? Carmen, you want to read that? like briefly, right? Which is like, you can actually have it give some feedback on an essay. So let's say the students are writing some supplements. And the thing is like, you kind of need to engineer the prompt pretty specifically related to the, uh, the prompt that you put into chat GPT, not the prompt for the essay prompt. Um, but you need to kind of, um, uh, you know, engineer that pretty well. And the one that you kind of need to engineer sometimes differs a decent amount based off of the essay prompt that's that's actually being asked. Um, and so, you know, I won't cover too much detail here about that. Maybe I have a more, another session at some future point that will like really go into detail, of like how can you integrate AI a little bit more even in, into your practice. Um, and, but the, um, so, so, you know, we have, we have one that came in here in chat um, from, from, from Georgia, for example, um, that I think is a good one, right? Um, so you put some essays in, to the AI detector and it says they're human written, but there's certain sentences that it says partially could be AI. Okay, once again, this is not a perfect science. So the thing that I think is the most important here is if you're reading these essays and you find a very severe lack of specificity in the essay in detail, okay? Which is what we saw, right? So you see lots of buzzwords, but you don't see the detail. You see details like, I love tacos, okay? Like these are, these are like, we're like that, that, you know, maybe like at least enchiladas, like I, I, I don't know, right? Or tamales, like I, just throwing it out there, right? Um, but that one, in, like, there's just a lot of things that are that are like, uh, like the the detail, like, really fails on closer inspection. So what we do find is that some students, you might input their essay, 
And, it, you know, it's flagging, hey, there's like a 10% probability for AI or 30% probability for AI, or maybe even a sentence that's like 60%. And that's okay. Because what I think is going to happen here is that admissions officers are going to still read these essays. And what they're really reading for is, is like that lack of detail. And those are things that they probably wouldn't even, you know, they're, they're probably getting in the no pile anyways, because it's not great, right? Like, it's just not a great essay, right? Because the content is not very strong. But um, those are like the things where you're like, hey, this may be AI written. When you get to a level of detail that's like, hey, there's no way that like an AI, like nobody's making this up, right? Like the student's probably not making this up either. Like it's just like, this is very clearly what likely happened. Um, you know, they're, they're not going to be out there like, hey, let me now check this for AI, right? They're just going to be like, nope, that sounds good. That reads well. Um, I think the challenge with the AI is that you know, in, in having it write those first drafts of essays is like the level of detail that you would have to put in the essay in the prompt is by that, by the time you do that, in order to get like a really good detailed thing, you might as well just written the damn essay. The essay. Yeah. Okay? yeah. Like, that's my point. Um, and the challenge with the AI is, is a lot of times it doesn't realize which details are actually useful and which aren't. Okay. And so it may leave some stuff out that it would actually be really good. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not super concerned about that. It's not like you're they're going to go in and be like this sentence and this sentence, right? Like it's it, it and it's not as obvious as like plagiarism detection, where it's like, well, that was directly pulled from you know five lines pulled from some other essay, right? Um, so I just want to mention that. Like, I, my point is, is like students should not be concerned if they're literally not using it. Okay, um, students should be concerned if they've used it at all, right, to, to aid them, right? So even if a student's like, actually, I wrote the whole draft myself, but I looked at AI before I did that. And it's like, ooh, like an AI version of it. I'm like, ooh, that, that's not great. Or I wrote the draft, then I had AI rewrite it, and I picked some stuff that I'm like, I really liked from that. That's when I start getting a little concerned because they're going to pick out those little phrases that sound really good, but actually are like the massive hallmarks of, of, of like, how an AI would write it, okay? I think it's gonna be interesting, not as, you know, this year, but even more so next year, because we have had the, um, the Supreme Court decision about affirmative action and put, denying that. So a lot more colleges have introduced these, my living, you know, what are my living experiences and, you know, my identity and all of that. And so- I have those are prime tropes that can be are going to be out there in AI. Yeah, I think part of the issue with those essays. So anytime you're a student, you're like, I have no idea what to write for this essay. That's when there's risk for them to be like, I'm going to take a look at something or I'm going to use some AI, right? I'm going to look at some example essays. I'm going to do these things that, you know, are not necessarily great. Because um, a lot of kids don't even know what to write for those essays, right? That, that it's, a, it's a struggle for you know, in particular, some of our population, right, that 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 may, um, you know, just not have those types of experiences that or the experience that they feel are compelling enough to write about in those areas, or be like, hey, they want this, but I don't actually have that, right? So now they're like, let me write about this one hour experience that I had, like, you know, five years ago, or whatever. And they're kind of using AI to fill in the gaps with like, good sounding phrases and buzzwords. And that's sort of, and that's, that's going to be concerning so we'll see what ends up happening or transpiring this year I, i'm a lot as i said like we you know we, we've trained all of our coaches on on kind of ai and ai identification they all kind of if they're suspecting something we'll plug it into copy leaks it's very rare that we are finding something where where we are seeing it as like hey this is pretty clearly like the students leveraging or using ai and i don't think that the students are out there like actually doing it or at least the ones that that we're working with and you know the ICs that we work with are working with um or at least as I said the students that are applying these more highly selectives I think where students are like hey I can use AI for this other school because I know I'm probably getting in anyways because I have really strong academics like the essay is not going to matter I think that's going to be more of a risk um and then what what are those admissions officers actually going to do but like why would you use AI in that case because just write anything at that point right like you don't you don't want to put your self or expose yourself to that that kind of risk so carmen is there anything we've missed so uh do you think colleges will just run all of the essays before um through ai before reading them um and then certain essays um 
Like if there's like a questioning, they'll pull it out and read it. Or is that just going to go in the note pile? I, I highly doubt schools are going to use these AI detectors for this year. Okay. Um, and I think part of that's because to actually set up the system that actually sends all of the essays to the checkers and gets the scores back and then puts that all into their systems. Let's be honest, probably not happening. Um, also, if you look at what they're doing for plagiarism, there's relatively few, like there's not, there's very few institutions that literally run all essays uh, through plagiarism detectors. Um, I believe the University of California system does. Uh, I think they use Turnitin for that from what I hear. Um, but most are not, right? They're just kind of reading it, right? They're kind of trusting the student. And, and, and honestly, I think they understand that it's unlike, like, unless the student's like just blatantly lying on their application, which they can't really tell anyways, like if it's truth or not, right? They're kind of like, hey, students that are plagiarizing stuff are probably not going to have great content anyways, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not going to do necessarily that well in the, in the process. So if they're not utilizing plagiarism detection systems already, then what makes us think that they're just going to magically implement these AI detectors? I do think that as they're going through this process and realizing, hey, I might be reading some stuff that might be AI, they may be like, hey, let me pull up copy leaks. So let me pull up the, you know, one of these other checkers and actually like plug it in just to almost like confirm that, hey, I'm, my reading of this is correct, right? I think that's going to be more likely the scenario. Um, and, you know, I also don't see like, you know, a school that gets 50,000 applicant applications a year, um, you know, with a bunch of essays, you know, spending, you know, like 20, 30 grand on, on, or more on um, AI detection, you know, for the essays that all the students are submitting. I think where they're going to get concerned or where they might really start taking a look at this is, you know, the, maybe a few years down the line where they're like, actually, I missed some. I, I accidentally let in some kids that I shouldn't have let in and they're not doing well at my school. Like their grades are poor, you know, ex, you know, that it, it's what happened back in the day with like China, right. Where people were like faking the transcripts. Right. Um, and, um, and people were getting into these schools with like fake transcripts and they were like not doing well. And people were confused. Like that's the, con that's the bigger concern, right? If somebody gets passed with AI and does perfectly well at the school, I don't think they're going to care that much. Right. I think that, the, and, and I don't think it's going to happen super frequently, at least at like the more highly selectives. Um, so I just want to mention like, that's, that's what I think is likely to transpire here. Um, maybe in the future, you might have some school, large school systems, like a, like a, as I said, like University of California that might, because they're doing it with, from my understanding with plagiarism detection. Not 100% sure on that, but like, I, I, I've, I've heard that. Yeah, I don't like, know. And, you know, with the PIQ, is like, it wouldn't do us much good to do a... a no, you, I mean, it would be you know, still... Like, a, it's such a specific thing. And it's like, you don't have this random language in there, right? Yeah. Like, you yeah. don't. Um, and so that's going to be real blatantly obvious, I think. Um, and I think with a lot of these supplements too, they're going to be, it's going to be really obvious if they use AI because that's not what they're looking for. Right. And now it's trying to right. pattern match, right. For things that the schools actually are not even looking for. So I just, I, I yeah. Be... yeah, I think it'll be very interesting. I bet though, at the end of this season, we're going to have people who are going to go, you're going to have students, especially Oh, I got into XYZ competitive school with my AI essay. I mean, yeah, we can already see it coming, right? But you know what? It's going to be a very small number. Yes. Right? It is. And, and the way that they used AI was probably not like, hey, I just had AI write the entire essay for me. And I literally just like typed in like three sentences and just had it make a bunch of stuff up and submitted it. Like, that's not going to be... Like if they say, oh no, I got in using AI, I'm like, I would like to know the full story. Um, <laughs> and, you know, at one of these more selective institutions, because I bet they actually might have even spent more time doing that than they would have just if they had just written it themselves, right? Like, um, because some of these kids are pretty sharp with how to utilize it, like really understanding how to like really good prompt engineering. Um, yeah, that's... <laughs> Well, well, we'll we'll have to have an encore to the encore, right, Brad? We'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll see what it is next year. I'm I'm very like there there will be a lot more information, a lot more things to take a look at, and you know I think for for next year we'll even take a closer look at um you know like lever you know 
we'll have a lot better data on like how to leverage AI to improve things as well. Yep. And uh, George is asking about the email. So you're going to- yeah, I'm going to give you a link to some resources, um, including I think some training material that we have um, that we use with our, our coaches, like in terms of like AI detection uh, that you all might want to read through. Uh, an email that you can send out to your families or modify to send to your families. And then we'll also send one where, um, what do we send when we actually think we detected AI? Um, so we'll, we'll put that one in there, there, there too. Um, and for, I'll have all of this in my show notes on our website at cindymcdonald.com. So you'll, it'll go with the recording, but you'll have access links to all of that. So watch for the email to come to you. I know there are a lot of people watching this recording who were not able to join us today and they will be able to go and access that as well. So thank you, Brad. It is a busy time of year right now. So that's it all. Is def definitely. All and right. Um, I hope people, well, I wanted to mention, uh, going back to the question about how we can use AI in our practice, uh, Mark Kruver, I had him on my Friday forum. He's an IEC. He's actually created a website called AI for the IEC. So I'll put a link to that recording about just how, and I, and our biggest benefit is a lot from a marketing perspective, you know, in, in saving time and creating marketing content, things like that. So Mark, uh, Mark Kruver addressed that topic um, previously. Also, uh, watch for emails. I'm starting to send out, um, did you know? So, so I'm going to send these different emails as I find out about things and resources that I think are important to you. I'm going to send them out. So for example, Landmark College is doing a professional visit day. They're doing one in May and they're doing one in November. They actually offer travel um, stipends to help you be able to afford. So I'll send that out next week. Pekka, the registration for the virtual PDI we're gonna be doing in January. I'm so excited. So that registration is open now. We've already got registration, so don't wait. It will fill up. I'm, I'm positive it'll fill up. When you register, put down how you heard from it, just mark influencer, and, and then they'll know that you heard about it from my Friday forum. So um, look for other things that are coming out. And again, Brad, thank you so much for your time twice in a very busy month. I really fun this time, it might have been more fun. So we can, uh, we can go with that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And Carmen, thank you very much. And everybody, good luck this weekend. You know, just fire up the students and, and get those. Um, we don't even use red pens. We use our little comments and, and send stuff to, to prompt. And let's get our students all ready and, and get going, them done. Right? Their, their early action, early decision, right? That's yeah. All. Yeah. I mean, like November, October 15th, let's get those going. So, all right, everybody, I'll see you next week. We're going to talk about gap year. And so I have an alumni and a representative from gap year association and Julia Rogers, who is a gap year consultant. So, so, and Carmen, if you can join us, we'll love to have you and talk about your experience too. Have a great weekend. Thank you, everybody. Thank you again. And take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.